Welcome back. As we transition from summer to fall, we know the leaves are about to start falling, which can be a lot of fun. They can be a lot of fun, but there could actually be a hidden danger in a pile of raked leaves. Veterinarian Dr. Mike Hutchinson is here with some answers for us to explain all this. And Dr. Mike, even though it's getting colder, ticks could still be hiding out in those leaves, right? It's absolutely uh, they're everywhere and in the leaves especially. So I, I I feel like the bad guy. I love jumping in a pile of leaves. You know, you remember that when we were children, get a day off of school and we would have a blast raking up the leaves and jumping in them. But now we have to worry about the ticks and they're loaded. So I don't recommend our dogs run through them anymore or our kids jump into them because there's so many ticks and you know, they're disease carrying experts and they're gonna be around until we get some really cold weather. Usually after about five frosts, they start to um, mm. become less mm. active, but yeah. they can still be insulated any day above 32 degrees, they're back up. I was gonna ask you when, when they finally go away for the year. And so it sounds five like that's frosts, a, that's, that that's takes a while actually, yeah. Uh, there's another yeah. thing we wanted to talk to you about. This was new to me, I had never heard of this, but it is something that's known in our area. Uh, there's a TikTok video that has over 60 million views of a bot fly being removed from a small dog. So does this really happen? Yeah, so right now there's bot flies larva, these things in your yard. Um, they commonly infect squirrels. They commonly infect rabbits. We see them all the time. Occasionally a cat or a dog will get one. Um, they're very common in horses, sheep, caribou. So yeah, this is kind of one of those gross things that veterinarians see a lot of. And actually the technicians get excited when these come in because it's fun to hop you know, to, to hide and seek with the, the larva to get it out, which is uh, exciting in the day in the life of a veterinarian or a veterinarian technician. So is, you know, there, okay. <laughs> is there a place that they're more common or anything that you should look out for? And is this something that you should definitely call your vet about? Because I think in that video, they removed it at home. Yeah, so what happens is they start to form a, a bump in the skin and then it, it erupts like a volcano. You see a little hole. Most people when they see that would call their vet. And then the vet would say, why don't we, why don't you bring it in so we can take a look? And then we see something moving inside that hole. And lo and behold, there's a, uh, a larva that ne is ready to come out. Whether we take it out um, or not, it's going to come out on its own because that's part of their life cycle. So it's just one of those real gross things. The, the bot fly larva, I mean, in horses, the, the, the bot fly itself looks like a bumblebee. And they'll lay eggs along the legs of horses, for instance. And the horses will, the itches, they'll start to eat them. And then they'll get, if you Google this on the internet, they'll get sometimes hundreds of bot fly larvae in their stomach and they're attached to the stomach. We give them a simple dewormer, it kills them and uh, the bot flies are gone. But it is one of those things that are very, very common in animals in North America. Yeah, and in fact, we've edited that video so you don't see all the, the gory details yeah. of it. But essentially, they were putting Vaseline on the hole and then eventually they were sort of able to encourage the, the worm to come out. Yeah, that was one of the tricks that you can use. There's other tricks we use, darken the room, then you know, get ready with your forceps and turn the lights on real quick and, and grab them. So, so there's all kinds of tricks that we have. Or just yeah. call your veterinarian. Call That's your what vet. I would do yeah. at that point. Yeah. Right, let's, yeah, let's, talk about, fun way. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about getting our pets ready for cooler weather because mm -hmm. they are impacted by this just as much as we are. It, it absolutely, and this is a perfect time if you do have outdoor dog houses to re-insulate them, throw new straw down, you know, make sure that they're gonna be dry and draft free if they're gonna go into that door. Some of them like flaps, some of them chew the flaps off, but there should be a, you know, partition that they can go around and get out of that draft. That's very important. Make sure it's up off the ground so that they can stay warm because moisture will rise and make sure that they have plenty of fresh water at all times and dogs outdoors need to eat more than dogs indoors. We do want a little layer of fat on them for that extra you know, warmth in the winter time. Um, for the indoor dogs, uh, we don't really have to change much right now. We just wanna watch out for everybody's changing their antifreeze. They're putting rodenticides out for the rodents that are coming in now. Um, you know, They start heading into the houses. So make sure that your dogs are safe from all of those and your cats. Great advice. Thank Always you, Dr. Mike. Advice. What a wide range You're of topics we've covered today. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dr. Mike. We covered a lot. Dr. Mike Hutchinson of Animal General in Cranberry and regular PTL contributor. And you can look for him also on KDKA Radio.